Welcome to Hope County Radio. You'll stop for Far Cry 5 news, tips and tricks, and the always changing Far Cry Arcade. Here are your hosts, Nick and Nate. Hey everyone, and welcome to Hope County Radio Episode 3, your bi-weekly Far Cry 5 podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Nate, and with me as always is... Nick! Nick, the funny guy who messed up the first two times Dude, when I was trying to do my intro. The first four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four, first four. Um, before we get started, I would like to say that this episode is sponsored by the power of yes. And Jesus. Uh, so Nick, how's your week been? Oh, good, actually. Really good. I tore out my heart and and just stomped on it. No, um, so far it's been pretty good. I've been kind of slowly chipping away. I had to get I had to get some stuff done. Get some stuff done in Far Cry so I I, I could actually talk today. Yeah, I did too. I was about close to finishing John's region in terms of the notoriety basically Mm -hmm. and so i stopped i think last wednesday and i was like okay today i need to either finish john's whole campaign Mm -hmm. or get close to it and i got close to it i just got to the bunker and then i had to stop and get ready for work this morning but so yeah i'll get to that probably tomorrow it's a good banker it's really nice yeah all right (laughs) Uh, Well, let's go ahead and get the show started. Let's go ahead and start with grinding. First off, I want to say let's try to get Hope County Radio on Twitter up to 50 followers. That's going to be at Hope County Radio. I try, see, I trip myself up because originally I thought we were going to call it Hope County Pod, and so that's what I almost always want to say, but that's not it. It's at Hope County Radio. Uh, Second thing, we could really use your maps. You want to have your map shown off in arcade, whether it be co-op, journey. Actually, I would really love to have some journey maps. That would be a really, that would be really good. Uh, Good section. I got a funny story of a journey map. I'll I'll talk about it in arcade archive. Did they tell you to don't stop believing? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Good. Good. Um, Yeah. If you have primarily for us would be PS4 maps because that's what we're playing on. Uh, We're still looking for somebody. If you want to review maps either on Xbox or on PC, you're very much more than welcome to get in contact with us and we'll be happy to work with you because we would like to see what the other platforms are making, probably specifically PC to see. Yeah. See what those PC dorks are doing. Yeah. See what the mass race thinks about our maps. Whoa, whoa. In today's <laughs> political stature, you're saying that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, if you got some maps that you would like to show off, we'll be happy to showcase them on Arcade Archive. Always, always up to taking new maps, different kinds of things. Um, we can also use your questions as well. If you want to ask any questions in terms of Far Cry, or you want to ask just how our day's going, you can go to threatx3productions.com, or you can tweet at us at Hope County Radio. If you have any questions, you have any feedback, anything like that, we're always open to all of that good stuff. For now, let's go ahead and take a look at our Far Cry newsletter. All right. One of the first things we have up is they put out a new patch. So kind of going through the uh, patch notes talk about what they've done uh stability and performance from fix low occurrence of crashes and walk through breaks so that's god i hope they fixed a lot of that and i'll get i'll get into i'll get into that more later but oh god additional quality bug fixes fixed low occurrence of safe corruption oh god i'm glad i haven't had that um, I remember back in the day, back in my day, when I played Dead Island, it was a game about zombies. Um, no, uh, PlayStation 3 Dead Island had a horrible bug where your your saves would just be eaten. I had this one day, I had the day off, and I went for like eight whole freaking hours of playing the game. I got on like the next day, and I was all of a sudden back on another island, and I'm like wait what <laughs> like i pretty much turned the freaking game in after that i'm like nope 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 fuck that yep that's what happened to me when battlefield 4 came out on ps4 i was i immediately because one of those things brand new console yeah i want to play this awesome new looking shooter i got like the first i think it was the first two missions i did and then i had to stop 
and then I saved. And the next day I went to go play, mm-hmm. and then they I had to start from the beginning. I was like, okay, that's weird. Yeah. And I was just like, whatever, I don't have time for this. And so a couple days later, I went to do that again. And then I just went, I played probably about five hours straight. I mean, I played for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped and I saved. And then I think it was like a week or so later, maybe a few days later. And it had completely wiped my save. I had to start from the beginning. And I was like, I am never going to finish this campaign. I don't care about this campaign. This is stupid. Mm -hmm. I don't, that, that save issues are one of the worst things in video games. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like it's like back in the day when you had to worry about your memory card <laughs> and somebody would like override your save or like they would delete the block or something on accident. Oh my god. Like you could have spent hours, hundreds of hours exactly. trying to this do this. Exactly. This is the modern day gone. equivalency of like somebody like dropping your memory card into like water or something. Yep. Um yep. <laughs> so it looks like they've uh bunch of bug fixes there was something in particular that i wanted to point out because they got like improved co-op connectivity so that's good uh herc was blowing up a client player when in helicopter (laughs) (laughs) freaking herc what the hell man (laughs) i was doing that um i'll talk a little bit but i have a funny blowing up story uh when we're when we get into the other part of the show uh and improved... i hope it has to do with rockets yeah uh improved map download efficiency uh, i haven't personally had a problem with that but like you've been telling me about some of your glitches that i haven't even had so it's it's always weird how it's like one percent of the people can get this glitch or get that glitch um and of course those are the loudest people on the internet you know, because you don't go to the internet to sing Kumbaya. You go to the internet to, you know, go to 4chan and just talk some shit. Um, <laughs> fixed various arcade gameplay issues. Not enough of them. We'll talk about that later. Uh, fixed issue where map textures would be extremely low. Improved PvP matchmaking. But apparently not PvP. Yeah. We'll talk about that more later. Um, yeah. Fixed lobby loadout selection. Uh, fixed issue with arcade editor crashes. And then for PC only, these are, this is for the master race. Praise be. Fixed issues that were causing incorrect spawn if the game was minimized during loading. Okay. And I could have swore there was something. Uh, I don't know why. Now, I will else, but... say that I haven't had any download issues when it comes to downloading maps. I've had archived, archived, I've had arcade issues in general, and I'll get right. more into that in arcade archives. But yeah, no, downloading wasn't an issue right. uh, for me at all. All right, then there was a but... story you wanted to talk about. Yeah, so <laughs> on another more terrifying things I've ever seen in my life, GameSpot this past week, or last week, came out with a article that is basically titled uh, Far Cry 5 graphic settings dropped all the way down makes it Far Cry 5 potato. Yeah, right. And so on PC, they dropped the settings to the lowest they could possibly go. And usually when it does that, it, it the game looks about the same in any other game. It's just the textures, you know, aren't there. This game looks like a... 3d model horror game yeah like, it is terrifying all of the all of the people have soulless eyes it looks if you've ever watched the office there's this there's a funny clip that's gone around the internet where they're doing a C, uh practicing with a cpr dummy and everything just starts going awry and one of the characters cuts the face off of the dummy and puts it on his own that's what it looks like <laughs> it's terrifying absolutely terrifying um, there's a video up. Uh, we'll have a link to it uh, somewhere on here. The video is on the article, and it's it's also on YouTube, but it's it's right. quite hilarious. Just look up GameSpot and Far Cry Five, and you, you should be able to find it. Yeah, potato, go look up Potato Mode. Yeah, it was it was a really funny video as far as like it's it is interesting what you can do on the PC and just like breaking games in certain ways, and so yeah, it was it was really funny to watch. And as far as arcade challenge for this week, there were a few. As of right now, the ones that are still up are Rack'em Up, which is kill enemy players in any multiplayer map. Team Deathmatch Master, win matches in any Team Deathmatch map. And Liberator, complete featured outpost maps. So, 
Those all look pretty easy to do if you can get into a lobby. I had a little bit of issue with that, and I'll talk about that later, but um, I'm sure I've gotten all of these because I played some multiplayer this past week, so hopefully I, I unlocked some of those, and if not, I'm not really too worried about it. All right, so this week's live event is actually going to be quite interesting. It's Arcade Dawn. Arcade Dawn, infinite... Infinite maps, infinite fun. Visit any arcade booth or open the online menu and check out the featured maps. Playtime is in minutes. So it looks like we're wanting to we're wanting to get to three million minutes of arcade time in uh, the community event. And so uh, I'm not sure how much you're supposed to get to. I can't really tell how much you're supposed to get to by yourself. Hmm. But looks like you get either 100 XP and 50 um, of the silver. So there's a couple of different prizes here. Check out your Ubisoft club to check out all the things. Um, then we have arcade. We have rack them up, kill enemy players in any multiplayer map. Uh, team Death Master uh, win death matches um, in or win matches in Team Death Match uh, and complete featured outpost maps. So this one's called Liberator. So you have three new uh, arcade events as well this week. So check those out. All right, top 10 of the week. Let's go ahead and start off with number 10. It's the Spike Bat. Spike Bat, I haven't used a whole lot. I've used the regular bat. Sorry if that scared the mess out of you, you <laughs> earphone listeners. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't got to the Spike Bat yet. I've been using the aluminum and the wooden bat for the most part, but you had a pretty funny comment before we started that yeah. I enjoyed. Gets It makes me feel like Negan, and I, I, get, to, I get to feed Lucille some blood. You know, I thought that I was going to miss the machete and, like, the edged weapons. Like, right. when you do takedowns and stuff, like, in 4, Primal, and 3. But there's something super satisfying about just going up to a guy with a bat and doing mm. a takedown and just just braining him. I mean, it's... Oh, it's nice. It's satisfying. It's very satisfying. Yep. Number 9 is the 1911. That's the sidearm. Uh, the main the main reason I think this is a really good weapon is when you get the sniper or when you get the sniper when you get the silencer and you get a good like uh, red dot on it, um, it's really good for taking out off outposts and really silently. Yeah, agreed. Something to keep in mind though is, especially if you got the DLC weapons like the skins and stuff like that, the purple pack, and then the uh, right. other one I think it was Thrasher or something like that. Something I wasn't sure about, those are separate weapons. They're not skins that you can put on that gun. That is a separate gun. So, for example, I got the silencer and the extended mag for my 1911. That's the base model. I was like, okay, where do I do with the camo? And I looked at the very bottom of the screen, and that gun is standalone by itself. So now if I want to use that skin, I have to buy a silencer for that. And it's, it's not something that's super fun. So that's some that's something to keep in mind to make sure that depending on which one you pick, you you deck it out whichever one you want to play with. That way you don't spend extra money. Right. Number eight, the M60, your good old LMG. Right. I will tell you one thing. I especially at the beginning of John's bunker, I was getting wrecked by home dude, armored dude with a, with the LMG. It was just murdering me. Uh, I haven't got too too much hand t- hands on time with the M60, but it's one of those that, especially in Far Cry games, if I want to go loud, I'm just gonna put it in my inventory and then just go take out an outpost, and it's just just pure fun. Yeah. I mean that's definitely one of the reasons it's on here is when it is time to go loud it's night it's nice to have something that's not only pretty darn accurate but can take out most people in a couple of shots you know um some of your other weapons might be better for like headshots and might be better for just like if you want to go silent but if you are going to go loud you land like two maybe three and obviously with the m60 they're super 
quick succession so you land just a couple on like the chest area and that that mf -er is going down yep yep uh number seven the m79 the grenade pistol um this one's another good one um most of the time me and you play the same way where we're we're very silent right? and you know we try to take out aisle posts and stuff but if you want if you want a good you know pistol grenade pistol for those like convoys or you know even if you even if you do end up going loud and 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 you you just want to blow some crap up you know it's it's a really nice weapon I honestly think that this needs to be in your inventory. I would replace this over a silenced pistol because there's a lot of uses for it, especially in this one because there are some times where you have to take the road or you have to take a vehicle because it just it's it's easier to get that way. Right. And you encounter a lot of cult traffic, mm -hmm. a lot. So ha having so being able to pull out that pistol grenade launcher and just take care of the problem easier than you uh, pistol that you're just trying to shoot off. And even even in the past Parker games, I did the same thing. When I unlocked it, I just put it in there. I replaced it with the silenced pistol, just because yep. I had a lot more use out of the grenade launcher than I did the pistol. Which is why it's higher on the list. Boom. Exactly. <laughs> Number six, the Spaz, the semi-automatic shotgun killing machine. You or don't want me that. You don't after want that. I get some sugar in me. Ha <laughs> yeah, Exactly. You don't want that pop shotgun. Nobody wants that pump shotgun. It's okay. It's fun. It's all right. No, the Spaz, literally, it, it looks almost the same in every game, but it just looks so bad. You've got yeah. that tactical body with the way well, it doesn't have a stock on it, so it's just like, it looks like I'm here to just be a bad Yeah. Is, what it, is basically it. But it's one of those uh, shotguns I have used a lot more in this game than I have in previous ones just because I've encountered so much cult enemies that when they run up on you it's nice to just have something that just takes them out in one shot yeah and i mean especially when you do go into like bunkers or into close quarter areas um certain other weapons do put them down pretty quickly but there is something satisfying not only does the shotgun like launch them backwards but the sound of it do 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 like i think one of it's not the same weapon but it's the same concept i love in like expendables when terry cruz guys going around with that aa12 and oh, it's do, 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 and people are just like running away scared it's like you know it's yep. just, that's kind of the same thing that you get with the spaz yep so then number five, um, the ACR. This is the assault rifle version. And, you know, you get a good silencer on there. You get a pretty good scope. And if you if you don't have a sniper rifle, this could act as a, you know, as a pretty good one. Plus, obviously, being able to go full auto is also really good. Agreed. It at first, when I picked it up and didn't have any attachments on it, I really didn't care for it. it, it it's it's an AR that I was not having fun with at all. However, once I put that red dot on there, once I put that silencer, it made it a lot more tolerable, and it actually became a tool I wanted to use. Because the sniper rifle, I like it. Like, the base one in particular, I like it, but there's not a whole lot of use for it. Like, especially if I use my bow, which I snipe with my bow, then that defeats the purpose. Like, especially in this one, I need to have something that I can snipe with, and I need to have something that I can pull out at a moment's notice if I need to take care of a problem. So, personally, going forward, I think I'm going to try to go for more marksman, like get, like, the MS-14 or whatever, now that I just unlocked it. But you can always trust your uh, stock AR. I mean, if you need just a default thing just to throw in your inventory to go do a mission, it's it'll it'll get the job done. Number four, the ARCL Sniper, the one I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. It's basically a longer range version of the stock AR that's in the game. Right, it's but, got the extended barrel pretty much. Yeah, but it, it, it looks almost the same. It just Like you said, it just looks more extended. Yeah, um, It's got a stock sniper scope on it. Good basic sniper rifle. I haven't unlocked the other ones yet, so this is the one that I've primarily used. But right. I haven't used this one a whole lot simply because... I still use Grayson Boomer, so if I need a snipe 
like a sniper <laughs> that right. I'll just put grace in my inventory. You know, I don't need to do that for myself. Also, I'm wildly inaccurate with the sniper rifle this game for some reason. <laughs> well, it's like the, really it's those I ballistics. It's those darn ballistics. Those damn ballistics. Well, the good thing about the ARCL is that it is one of the main sniper rifles that is semi-automatic. And so with a lot of your other, like even like the 50 cals, those are mainly um, bolt action. And even the most powerful sniper rifle, which that might come up later, um, is bolt action. So being able to you know go pop 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 rather than you know having to cock it each time is one of the main reasons it's on the list so number three smg 11 one of the main reasons i put this instead of like the 1911 is because you get the silencer extended mag and a good red dot sight on it this could be really good plus if you hold down on l1 or the left bumper and then you change the um, fire rate to single shot, this could be a really good weapon. Plus, if things do kind of go in the shit hole, you switch it to automatic, and this is another weapon where a good couple of rounds in the chest area um, can take down an enemy pretty fast. And not only that, um, it it's really, really quiet. So even if you do like maybe get startled by somebody right in front of you and you pop off like three rounds to kill them, it's a good chance that nobody will hear it. Yeah, yeah, d- definitely. It, it, it goes back to the... I started there for a second. It goes back to the pistol grenade launcher. That's why it's higher up on the list is because there's a lot more uses out of it. The the right. SMG-11, it goes in the pistol slot, right? Yep. So if, let's say, you don't have a assault rifle or a LMG or a shotgun in your main inventory, but you have that and you run up on some cult members, just do your sidearm and then you've got the problem taken away right there. Yep. Number two, the 305 carbine T bolt rifle. Now, from my understanding, just by the looks of it, this looks to be just a good old hunting rifle, but it's powerful as all get out. Yep. And it's got the best range out of all the sniper rifles, other than like the 50 cals, which I mean, the only thing I don't necessarily like about most of the 50 cals is that you can't do a, sni- a silencer on them. So I like uh, you put on uh, you put on the upgraded uh, scope and you put a silencer on it and it has full range. It's all the way up to 10. Um, the, the drop distance on it is almost non-existent. Like only if they're like literally halfway across the map do you have to kind of aim above their head other than that you can kind of it's the drop distance on it is just really good yeah so then number one i think we can both agree on this the recurve bow nothing's better than you know going into an outpost and taking out every single person with just you know go punisher style through the neck or through the eye or yeah, yeah, definitely. I haven't I haven't got to play with the recurve in particular yet, but one thing from the beginning that I've loved about this game cuz you know, me and you are both bow players, I love how the sound of the compound sounds like. Like it has that distinctive you hear it, mm-hmm. you hear the cams winding, and then when you release it's that solid thunk. It just it it sounds and it feels so good to use, right? And I I guess one thing I'd point out is I I could have swore it would have been the other way around because now the reason that recurve instead of compound bone is number one, is because actually the recurve has better distance. Like yep. I could have swore, and I obviously if there's any hunters out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but I could have swore that the whole purpose of a compound bow was that that was better for like hunting. Whereas the recurve bow looks more like a normal bow. So you would think like the the compound, that's the one that's supposed to be like for hunting and long distance. So I think that's weird, but that's the main reason it's the recurve rather than the combo because the recurve has more distance. So you don't have to worry as much about drop. So that's pretty nice. Well, from what I know about recurve and compound bows now, I'm not a hunter. I will say that. Wait, What? <laughs> I know I'm from Texas and I'm not a hunter. Um, the compound bow is, from my understanding, best for power because you've got that assistance from the cams, so you'll be able to pull that pull more of that weight. And from my understanding, 
a compound should be more powerful than a recurve. I don't think that's right, but that's that's just from my basic knowledge. I have a compound bow, and I I shoot it every now and then. It's so fun to shoot. It's one of those that you, you, you play bows and games for so long, and then you finally get one. Like, I had one when I was little, but I got a good one last Christmas, and it's just like, oh, my God, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> it's, it's like I could finally live my bow hunter's dream. Right. Yeah. See, don't feel bad. I'm actually from Idaho. For all the, for all you guys out there, I'm from Idaho. So it's like it's almost just as blasphemic, blasphemous, for me not to be into hunting. Yeah. Well, I it's, like it's fishing. One of those... I mean, there's there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. To each their own. I mean, I, I I'm not I'm not a real big hunter, but I'm not exactly from here. So. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man. Son of a. All right, let's go ahead and get into this week's Hope County update. Hope County update. Hope, Hope County update. Now, Nick, where are you at in the story right now? Well, unlike some people, I got done. Oh, man, 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 <laughs> I've man, got done with the John Seed portion of it, and I've started. I'm almost to the, the first um, notch, if you will, in Faith County. So Okay. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost to her first, you know, uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Uh, outpost. No. What do they call it when they send, they send the people after you? Oh, the, the, the first like story beat yeah, basically. Yeah. I, I can't remember what they call. There is a specific name for it. For some reason, it's just at the tip of my tongue. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm almost at the point where her. And actually, I'm almost at the same point on Jacob um, because I wanted to go get the the girl with the bow. So in mm-hmm. doing so, I'm almost at the first notch of him as well. And so that's kind of cool. I'm thinking. I'm thinking next week this this coming week so maybe by the time you hear this i've already done it but this week i'd like to get the rest of my furry friends i want to get i want to get peaches and i want to get uh uh cheeseburger i'd like to get those two and then maybe uh i just unlocked uh the ability to have two helpers so i'd love to have like the bear and the dog or the cougar and the dog i think that'd be really cool uh one thing uh, there's a video on youtube that points this out it's like 15 really good um you know attention to details and one of the things is is that your your camp your companions will talk to each other so like i had the sniper and i had boomer and so she actually went up to him he's like hey you're a good boy aren't you (laughs) yeah it's i i like how they have the audio for the companions like how they have them talk i'll be honest though i'm getting real tired of grace saying i hope you can drive better than you shoot oh that's my take on a sense of humor (laughs) she says it so many times i'm just like shut up literally every time you get in a freaking car just i hope you can buy better than you shoot hope 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 yeah it's so it's so annoying um well, for me, I mean, I got an arrow in the knee. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, well, for me, <laughs> for me, I just finished the dog. Oh, well, slight spoilers. I just finished the dog fight with John Seed. I got the last notch on the notoriety meter and right. the, activated the mission. Um, I'll be honest, that dog fight is not fun. Holy hell, that dog fight is not fun. Yeah, and see, I, do- I, I actually had it pretty easy on the dog fight, but yeah, go ahead on with your story. Well, it's harder, especially if you haven't done Nick yet, because I didn't get to do Nick. I did, I think it's Zip Mafka, I think was his name. He's the dude in the, he's the dude with the flamethrower. He's a main story character mission. So I did his, and then after I def- after I finished his, then I unlocked the third notch on the bar, and then that's when the ending mission started. So I didn't get a chance to do Nick yet. So I get into the plane, and I I fly up. I go to do the dogfight, and all of a sudden, like, I'm shooting at him, and he just, like, dives down. And so I'm looking around in the plane trying to figure out where he went, and so I was like, oh, there he is. And I'm constantly doing these turns. Next thing I know, I just get gunned down. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I respawn. I respawn in the uh, crop circle because that's where I crashed. And so I'm like okay so now i have to get in the four-wheeler and drive like 500 meters or so to where the airplane hangar is at the john seed ranch 
Oh, geez, and so it didn't even respawn you in the in the wreck? No, no, oh, no. Man. It respawned. It, yeah, it respawned me like where I landed, but without a plane. So I had to go Jeez. drive down that runway, get in the plane. I got I got up in the air, and basically the same thing happened, except another plane, not John's, shot me down. Oh, great. So then yeah. I respawn again, almost in the same area. I go to the hangar. There's no plane there. There's not huh. a plane on the runway. There's not a plane in the hangar. So I have, so I'm like, okay, I see Nick's farm. Let me go to Nick's because it looks like there's a plane there. There's not a plane there. So I fast Jeez. travel back to back close to where the John Seed Ranch is. I drive back down there. Finally, there's a plane. <laughs> so long story short, I ended up defeating him, and I, I you know, I, I got the dogfight, but that's because I didn't let him out of my crosshairs in the plane. I just, I yeah. moved when he moved. And that's, but if you don't do that, especially if you don't have Nick, like if you have Nick, most people just use him to gun him down, which yeah. would have been nice to know, but I didn't have him. So that, that was not fun at all. Like it, what I think they could do to make that better or what they could have done to make it better is to be able to give you some sort of lock on feature in the plane. So you, he could yeah. around and you could go, all right, lock on and then fire a missile and then he'll like wave off and then you just do that again. That would have been a lot easier to do. Yeah, either that or in a lot of games, when you have dogfights, you'll have the crosshair, but then you also have like a little circle basically telling you if this is where you're shooting, yeah. then you're going to hit them. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. not having that and having to make that kind of calculations in my head was very frustrating. Now, I had a similar um, experience, but it was actually during the Nick, uh, the Nick mission. I had to do that multiple times, and it was because of that darn, you know, um, that darn uh, dogfight. Like, dogfights are terrible. Um, and I kind of said this on our Discord group. I'm like, you can look straight down in a helicopter and still be moving forward side to side, and, you know, you can do all this, like, arcadey stuff. And that, like, they focus on the arcade funness of it. But this, as soon as you get into a plane, that's when it's like all of a sudden it's um it's like Battlefield where it's like super hard. Now, obviously, Battlefield is way harder to uh, pilot. But I'm just saying, like, in comparison, it's it might as well be Battlefield because, yeah, trying to maneuver around and figure out which plane you're supposed to be looking at can be really, like, frustrating because it doesn't yeah. necessarily point out the uh the plane for you all you have is that detection meter pointing in the direction of the guy so sometimes you could be looking really close to him but maybe you just can't see him i think that going back to what we talked about on last episode some of the complaints with the vehicles is that the dials don't move none of the gauges move anything like that so maybe that could have something to do with the fact that there's no lock on feature on the plane you know, because then it would look weird if that was animated, but the dials and the gauges weren't animated. So. See, now now that you mention it, I did look at it, and the dials don't move very accurately, but they do move, like, when I sway side to side. I'll take another look at it, but whenever I was doing that three or four times, that John Z dog fight, the gauges didn't move for me at all. They just look like stickers, which yeah. I'm not a big... I'm not going to complain about because I don't get in vehicles all that often. Um, but besides that, I had some, I've had since I started the game, some glitches. I had one in particular with boomer when I first started to where I went to go take out the outpost. That's right by Ray Ray's ranch. And boomer was just literally stuck on a part of that map. Like he would not move. I would walk up to him and his head would turn and look at me, but his body wouldn't move. Oh God. So, so ultimately, like, I couldn't do anything to fix it except for start the game over, and I really didn't want to. Like, start, shut the game off, and then start it back up. Right. So I just did that outpost by myself without him there. And I ended up getting it undetected, which was cool, but, like, it, it, I was like, okay, that's that's not cool. In particular, though, as of right now, as of recording, I can't finish the the side mission to unlock the alien gun. I can't do it. Oh, you're still having that glitch? Yeah, it's it's like I'll I'll go back next time I play and see if I can get it. But at the time when I whenever I was trying to finish it, one of the things you have to do is pick up these alien pieces in the crop circle area. Well, I got all three of them, and then I went to go get the fourth, and I walked 
all the way around this cow and it looked to be under the cow and apparently a lot of people have had this glitch as well to where you just can't get that last piece because it's stuck well see yeah i don't know if that's a glitch because whenever i got it it was next to it the cow still glowed even though i grabbed it I couldn't. I walked all the way around the cow. I blew the cow up. I shot it. I hit it with a bat, and I didn't get any interaction to pick it up. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. It, it, that that was not very fun. Um. The other issues I've had have ha- had to do with arcade, but for the most part, I have had some pretty consistent glitches in in the game. Nothing has been game breaking except for that alien one. But and hopefully that they'll fix stuff like that soon within the first few weeks of the game because I imagine a lot of people are having similar issues. Right, right. But um, is there anything else as far as your your campaign goes? I mean, that's pretty much it for me. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've still been having a lot of a lot of fun with it, and I still uh, I really like the characters. I mean, uh, there's not too much that we can say about the characters other than. Um, You know, I, I do, I just, I really like how they've set this one up. You know, you have your three regions and taken down each one. Um, and then you have the three notches and each time you get to, you know, you get captured or, or something. And I I actually really like that. Um, Although I, I do have to admit, uh, this is going to be slightly spoilery. Um, but I do have to admit heading into the third one of of uh john's where you go to the church and then you immediately get hit in the head or whatever it's like were we not expecting that it's like i understand he has my friends but it's like i wish uh, i guess the that would be one of my only complaints is that it it forces me into it rather than maybe allowing me to at least try to like take it down stealthily and save my friends you know what i mean See, that didn't bother me because it was just like the other ones that it just it initiated a, a cut scene like right off the bat. And actually, I really enjoyed that. I liked that scene a lot more than the than the second one, you know, when he takes you to the bunker. Right. Yeah. I like this one because I love the interactions in the church. I liked the interaction with the preacher. I'm not going to say what it is if you haven't played it, if you haven't got to that part yet. But the interaction with the preacher, that was mm-hmm. really good. Like I li- I, I saw when that thing happened. Like, like right. I, I saw it, I was like, okay, I know it's going to happen. And even when I, it got to what I thought it was, it was still cool to watch. Yep, definitely. Um, but, yeah, I guess on on that note, I think we're going to give maybe uh, one more episode and then we're going to do a full-on spoiler cast. So if you're kind of playing at a slow pace like we are, um, then I just want to put it out there that, you know, two – Two episodes from now, I think, is going to be a good time. You know, maybe next yeah. time I'll, I'll have the the girl region finished, and the next time after that I'll have Jacob finished. And so hopefully then we'll do a full-on spoiler. We'll talk about everything. Um, but we'll also make sure to make the spoiler stuff at the end of the episode so that we can still give you your update. We can still give you our, you know, Arcade Archive and everything, and then do spoilers. But, uh, yeah, that was just something that we should – bring up that you know we are going to do spoilers but we are going to make sure that if you're going at a slow pace like us then we're going to make sure to give you enough time to to uh, finish it like we are yeah and like us we're giving you plenty of time that's what four weeks true Two episodes yeah. is going to yep. be like four weeks so hopefully if i don't have it finished by then then one of y'all can beat my ass because i should have had it finished by then because we told you <laughs> so let's give you plenty of time to finish it up or you know just just know that on that episode we'll have spoilers right and And, i mean granted there's probably tons of spoiler cast stuff on like on on ign IGN. or GameSpot, or you know i'm pretty sure there's tons of spoiler cast out there so if you've already finished by all means go to one of them but we're giving you plenty of notice not only so that you know when it's coming so that hopefully you can finish it by then but also write in with your impressions at threadx3productions.com go to our hope county tab and write in with your impressions i'll make sure to create another tab that will be like spoilery stuff and so at least then people don't have to see it if they don't want to um but also i think we'll we'll create it later wait for it we'll we'll let you know but basically 
basically we'll, we'll have a whole section where you guys can write in and, and talk about your impressions on it. All right, to start off Arcade Archive this week, we've got Nimroth23, also known as Surefire on Discord. His map is called Research Station. If you played uh, Modern Warfare 3, it's a dome from Modern Warfare 3. Oh, sweet! Looks, that one's cool. Yeah, looks really cool. So far as I've seen from the layout, it looks really interesting. Uh, I asked for a description, and he said, It's a medium-sized map taking place in Iceland. It's designed to be a relatively fast-paced map with lots of short and long lines of sight, but with plenty of flanking opportunities as well. Nice. There's some verticality in the map, which ties into that, as well as some secret spots and routes. So for any of these that we're going to talk about today, if you want to see more in-depth looks on them, go ahead and check out the breakout video, the Arcade Archives, on our YouTube channel at ThreadX3 Productions, and all of that good stuff will be there. We're going to give a brief description of these for now, but like I said, if you want to look at them more in-depth, that will be there for you on Thursday? I think yes. Thursday is right. Okay. Yes, good. Thursday. Um, yeah, if you want to look it up, if you want to look the map up on Far Cry Arcade, you can search Nimroth23, N-I-M-O-R-T-H-23, or just search Research Station. The second one we've got is uh, The Nuketown by Mercenary501. Oh, heck yeah. This this mf did a really good job. I mean, like, it's, at, for the most part, with all the assets that he had in the game he's made almost a one-to-one ratio version of it it's really good it's it it is one of the best ones i've seen so far for sure Uh, i asked for a description from him as well and he says it's one of the better nuketown replicas on the ps4 servers and it is made to be a one-to-one scale replica yeah almost the entire map is made with generic shapes as well Yep, yeah. That's one thing to point out is that he did everything generic rather than just putting up random houses that sort of look like it, which there are a ton of those. Um, I like how modest he is by saying better. It's like one of the only good ones, if I'm if I'm being honest. A lot of people, what they do is they use super generic, um, they use the pre-made stuff. And so there's a couple of them that are actually not too bad. Um, but unfortunately, like they just they don't have the geometry quite right. There's one that's just absolutely horrible. It pretty much just has a two story house on one side, two story house on another. The buses are parallel to each other, not scat or not um, staggered like they are in the real yeah. map. And it just not only that, but it's really, really big. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's too big. The, the distance between the house to the first bus is way too long. So he has his ratios just way off. I feel like a lot of the other ones that are on the, the PS4 servers, especially cause that's what we see right. is just people like, Oh my God, I got to make new town. I got to make new town. Right. They don't even and really think about it. <laughs> they just go, nope, boom. they just, they just make it. And I've seen, I actually, both of us have in the arcade discord, we've seen his up mercenaries updates as he's making this. And it's, this has taken him a lot of time to do. It's been very meticulous and mm-hmm. I, it's, it's something that you definitely should check out. So if you want to check this one out, search for the map name, the, in all caps, Nuketown, or you can search by the creator Mercenary Five Hundred One M E R C I N A R Y Five Hundred One. All right, number three. This one's called Jailhouse by PB Gamer Ninety Six. Now, I didn't get a big definition or a big description for this map, but basically, it's supposed to be a jailhouse, like like it says in the name. The focus I'm going to assume is on close quarters combat. He said that he made the map small and the middle is a death zone. So if I were to put it in Call of Duty terms, it's a small scale map. If you were to play Domination on it, for example, B would be the center and that's where the kill box is for the most part. Yeah, Everybody right. wants to go for B and it's just all, all out massacre. So I guess that's the vibe he's trying to go for on this map. But besides that that's all we got for this week we do have some stuff about arcade that we would like to talk about though yeah and i don't want anybody to think that we're trashing the game at all obviously we love far cry we we wouldn't be doing the show but at the same time we do want to be very critical of some things that need to be fixed and some things that if they haven't been need to be addressed now for the most part everything we're going to say has been addressed but 
we have this platform why not use it let's go ahead and get it out there hey we have had these issues they need to be fixed mm-hmm. you had some that i'll go ahead and let you start off with uh yeah really big issue it was it was a really big frustration for me like i actually stopped playing multiplayer because i was just like no screw this um so this morning actually i get on to multiplayer i try to start my day off with arcade to just kind of get the juices flowing and just to make sure that i'm always trying to keep that part of the community and see what's going on and so i start a multiplayer map and the uh, it was so frustrating because i had people without names above their head but sometimes it would be a ally and sometimes it would be an enemy so i had instances where i'd get killed by somebody without a name above their head and i thought okay that might be a a good a good guy but nope i get killed by him and then there's other instances where i empty an entire clip into this person i'm like i know i'm hitting him what the f is going on and i'm getting i'm getting like you know steam coming out of my ears kind of rage going on because it's just like it's so frustrating and then there's one instance where there were two people right next to each other neither one of them had a, a name tag above them um and one was an enemy and one was uh an ally so i come in i'm like okay this guy's not shooting at me so he must be a good guy another guy comes in looks at me and kills me and i'm like oh okay (laughs) i've i had that same issue as well where i would be like okay is that a teammate is that an enemy i'm not sure my main issue one of my main issues is the multiplayer as of right now isn't anything to write home about at all it is very 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 bare bones the biggest complaint i have in terms of multiplayer is i think it's cool that when you join like multiplayer lobby the main maps you're picking from are user generated maps right but that doesn't make a balanced multiplayer because i played three different maps in a row and each one of them had a very specific play style and mm-hmm. it, it it and some of them some of the loadouts were different as well so there wasn't a consistency to it so i could have done really well on this one map and do terrible the other one because it switched from a short range to a long range map. True. So you've got to have some form of consistency or some curation would be better. Yeah. Say, hey, do you want to play Ubisoft maps? Okay, here's a playlist for that. Do you want to play long range or short range? That would be a lot better. Also, in terms of maps, finding maps and playing maps in multiplayer, it is not an easy thing to do as of right now. Right. I think it's I think it's a lot easier for solo and co op, but we ran into this issue because of us trying to do our segment of arcade archives in order for me to view these maps i couldn't do them by them i could not do them by myself i have to at the least get a six man private match together pick the maps that i downloaded to view and then either just go through and just dick around in there yep. or play a match in the map to look at it right yeah and that's not user friendly at all yeah the curation definitely needs to change and it needs to change very quickly um the only um defense that i'm gonna give you know ubisoft and the in the arcade you know people right now the only defense i'm really gonna give them is that we're living in the wild west right now you have you know thousands of people making hundreds of different maps per hour for all we know i don't know obviously i don't know the real numbers but we have a ton of people making maps and there's not really any way to curate them at the moment so i'm hoping that people stick with it because i do like the gameplay of it when you do get into a good match when you do get yourself a good loadout or you know it's not just it, the map itself isn't made in a really kill boxy kind of way or a really campy way the gameplay itself is actually really good and uh i don't know about you but i am actually not that great at like call of duty but i found myself you know racking up some kill um kill streaks yeah and i I don't normally do that in multiplayer games yeah one of the trophies that a lot of people complained about was to get 100 kills in, in multiplayer on arcade and I know multiplayer trophies are annoying, but it's not hard to get kills in multiplayer unless you're just really, really, really bad. 
for me to to answer your question for me on call of duties and other shooters if you're looking at kill death ratios i sit about a one to a 1.5 on average so mm-hmm. i'm competent yeah but um i've actually been doing really well at titanfall 2 recently i popped that in the other day anyway that's not a titanfall show oh multiplayer God, titanfall. <laughs> <laughs> multiplayer uh, kills are actually pretty easy to come by if you don't have those glitches like like we were having. Also, another thing to point out, they really need dedicated servers. Like I said, yeah. I played three matches in a row, and on the third match, it had a host migration because everybody was leaving the map, and then I got kicked, and then I had to restart all over again. Yeah. See, so. another thing you kind of brought up before was how bare bones it is we got deathmatch and team deathmatch um i really liked them to come up with an objective you know i'd i would yeah. love if we could if we could have some type of either payload or um capture the flag or something like that because team deathmatch and deathmatch those being the only things unfortunately the hardest thing about this is that the first impressions aren't going to be great for people so there might be a community out there that sticks with it and when we eventually get you know a payload when we eventually get a capture the flag then some really interesting maps might start coming but the unfortunate thing is will there be the community there ready and waiting for it i would like to think of arcade right now to be an early adopter thing to Mm -hmm. where everyone who's it been in it from the beginning is ha- is you know having fun and knows that that it's going to grow and it's going to change over time they just want to be you know front and center for when it happens i would like to see that i would like to see like you said people sticking around to, and making content like making maps and things like that for it to keep it going and then when it does get better people can flock back to it and be like oh this is a good suite now right but hopefully I w- like when I, I w- the other dlcs yeah. come out and more assets are being added to it maybe then that will kind of reinvigorate people yeah i i hope so because arcade does have a lot of potential and there's not really a whole lot of games that are doing that and trying to advertise this user generated mode as much as i've seen you know they've been pushing it pretty hard and even though there's a lot of bugs that need to be fixed you know there's still a lot of people in there working on maps playing maps doing things and and uh, I think the next thing I'm going to do is start try some of those journey maps because they look really fun. And those look to be <laughs> probably the more creative ones I've seen. So l- let me tell you my story about that, uh, that their uh, journey. <laughs> okay. Um, I-, I imagine, just in my head, I imagine when you make a really good journey, um, it could be interesting or it could be, like, you know, fun and stuff. But when you when you make an island and you just make you just put a bunch of bears and wolves and literally all you have to do is walk from one side of the island to the other it's a bad map (laughs) because here's the thing so um yeah nothing but bears and and wolves and all I, i all i literally had to do is walk over the thing is is that the bears and the wolves were so busy beating each other up that I had absolutely no problem. I popped a fast potion and I just went and no problem at all. So it's like, you got to curate yourself. You got to try to, you know, do some, do some, put yourself in a level design mindset and actually make something challenging. Don't just make something, you know, like, Oh, wouldn't it be cool if it was a giant arena with nothing but bears and wolves and you have to somehow make it to the other side. It's like, it might sound cool at first, but then when you're literally able to just run through with absolutely no trouble, I mean, that's just kind of like, okay, it's like, uh, dislike. (laughs) Yeah. I like the like dislike feature. I think Halo had that with Forge as well. When you played user created maps, you would have the option of do you like this map or do you not like this map or do you want to say anything? Right. So right. Yeah. That could help with curation as well. The more people like this map, the more it's going to pop up. You know. So. Yeah. Hopefully. Ho- ho- you hopefully guys should lot. like two bridges. You should go search for two bridges. It's a multiplayer map, and, and you should like that one. Oh, by the way, all the maps that I listed in Arcade Archives are multiplayer maps. Yeah. So is mine. So. I mean, so is Two Bridges. Oh. 
So, I mean, speaking of, you know, curating yourself, putting yourself in the mindset, I had a couple of things that I wanted to point out. Um, there's a couple of maps where there wasn't a clear direction. There's there's a couple of the co-op ones that you go through that basically is just like a story mission where you go from like point A to point B. Um, you have different types. You have assault, which is pretty much you have to kill every enemy on the map. Uh, you have bounty hunt, which is you kill a specific person on a map. And then you have outpost, which is obviously an outpost. Um, so the problem comes when you have like assault, but you have a giant map. So trying to find every single enemy that needs to be killed, especially when you start going into the 60s and in the triple digits, it's like, OK, that's not really fun anymore. You know, it's interesting. But so one thing I really think is a good tip for anybody who wants to make a good co-op map is the markers are your friends. Go to the gameplay uh, mode and next to the spawn, which you have to have one of those to even start a map. Next to the spawn is there's a permanent marker and there's a temporary marker. The temporary one will obviously disappear after you get close enough to it. And these could be really good to kind of tell people where they need to go. Because if all you do is drop them into a giant map and you want them to kill everybody, that can be kind of confusing. And it could turn something that could have been in a really interesting level and really like there's this one that was just really big and it was it was a good map but by all means. But since it was so directionless and I had no idea what I was doing it turned into a bad map. So having those markers could really help people out and just, you know, give people a good direction as to, okay, I've taken out almost everybody, but I have five people that aren't dead. Where can I go? And so having those markers could really help. Um, not only that, but just, I think if, if you, if you want, if you do want to have a big map, I think having a direction to go can really help. So whether you have like a dirt road that you have people follow or, you know, having some type of a direction, um, you know, having an A, B and Z, so to speak, A, B and Z. <laughs> a b and c area where like if i go to a and i take out everybody i should be able to see b where a is and then same thing once i get to b i should be able to see uh, the next zone from there so that it there's a clear like linear direction even if it's not necessarily linear but i should be able to look around and see the next area I guess a good example that I've personally experienced with what you're describing right. is one of the first maps I played, it was an outpost map, and I'm sorry to whoever created it, I don't remember the name of it, but you start off in what looks like the side of a ridge of a mountain. There's like a little like burned house, and there's like dead people around, and you start off in this in this area. Well, right, th th I think there's like one person that's that's camping out right there, so you take them out. Well... The only place that you can go after that is a zip line that connects to the father statue that you see in the game. Oh, nice. Okay. And you zip line onto that, and there's another guard that's on this like little rock ledge thing on the father statue. And but he doesn't see you when you zip line in. So you kill him, and then you can either from there parachute down to where the other enemies are, like across this bridge. You can either zip line down there, mm -hmm. or you can you can take the grapple and go down and just walk to the other side. Right. But it gives you those different lanes, different landmarks, and it's just yeah. visually appeasing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now there were some texture issues, but that could just could have just been with the game and and the and the internet so right. i'm not 100 but it, it was really it was really cool i didn't finish it because i was getting frustrated because i was trying to kill a vip and he kept flinching and they got alarmed at me so but <laughs> th that was a that, that's a good i think example of what you're saying is yeah give you those okay now you have to go here now go here or give you the option of going somewhere have some sort of way that you can give the player direction without specifically saying hey go here yeah because that is one thing i think is different than the other map editors that we've had in previous Far Cries is that now we have the option to have single player instances. We weren't able to do that before. It was only multiplayer. So creating a story essentially 
is something that's kind of cool or putting yourself through waves of enemies. That's something you can do in this. You weren't able to do that. Um, you were able to have AI characters, but you, it wasn't very, it wasn't very intuitive. So it was literally, you drop into a map and you'd kill people. But then after you killed all the people, it would just, it would keep you in that map almost forever. I think so I, I can't remember it. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it, there's, there definitely seems to be more use out of the yeah. enemy AI in this game. Like you can give them direction instead of just placing enemies and then you kill all of them and that's it. Exactly. Exactly. They, it's just, it feels more like you're creating a single player game rather than just creating a map and putting a bunch of enemies on it, which is kind of how the other editors felt. So this one's actually at least in a way where I can make like my own level. So it's like, I can make my own like doom level or I can make my own like old halo level and just, you know, put in enemies and, and stuff like that. Well, this has been hope County radio episode three. Hope you guys really enjoyed the show. We enjoy making it for you and we enjoy far cry above anything or else we wouldn't be doing this show again. Like I said, any questions, feedback, anything, you can hit us up at threatxreproductions.com or at Hope County Radio on Twitter. You can also join our Discord. We have a Hope County Radio Discord that will be pinned on our Twitter, especially, and all the information should be in the description down below. Having a lot of good conversations. Got a good few people we chit-chat with on a regular basis. Having some having some fun with T-Foles. T-Foles trying to call me. T-Foles. T-Foles. T-Foles trying to call me on my stuff saying that you created this. And I told him, I was like, nah, baby, I was born this way. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having some good discussions over there. Um, as always, I'm one of your hosts, Nate. And I am Nick. And we'll see you next time in Hope County where anything can and will happen. Hey, everyone, and welcome. (laughs) God damn it. I was injuring. Sorry, I was still laughing. Let me laugh. Uh, Let me be myself, sir. (laughs) Finally had some joy in my life. (sighs) I'm trying to do a show here, Nick, okay? Okay. Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Hope County Radio, your bi-weekly Far Cry 5. Damn it! it. (laughs) That was a good take, too. (laughs) I swear to God, if I say something, you just giggle. (laughs) There's a part of me that wants him that that wants that wants me to. uh, There's a part of me that wants Stephen to leave some of this in here because it is pretty funny. All right, just have it at the end, Stephen. Have it at the end. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh wait, shit! God damn it! I always do this. I don't ever do a, a marker. Um, shit. Okay. Uh, how are we going to do this? I guess I'll have a document on open. Do you want to take notes? Um, mark for what time? Yeah, mark for time. So like when we say a curse word and stuff like that. Uh, so like, for instance, we're going to have to mark that at a minute 38, we finally start the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>